welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and around here we like to explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And here we have a new pen. This is the Mahjan V1, a new vac-filled pen from Mahjan and one that is not merely an inspired or homage pen. This seems to be a fairly unique pen and the vac-filling mechanism may not even be the most interesting part about this pen. So grab a cup of coffee, let's spin that camera and take a closer look. All right, when you order your Mahjan, if you order with a box, this is the box that it will come with. I think that makes for a nice presentation. One good thing, they are getting better and better at the instructions that they include with their products. So you have that in both Chinese and in English. And then we get to the pen, and of course, we have the saying, Mahjan, feel the temperature of writing. They've had that motto for quite a while, but we're here today for what's new, and that is the Mahjan V1 Vac Filled Pen, a very unique pen from the beginning, and it just gets more interesting from here. First, I mentioned in the intro that this is an original pen from Mahjan, and one of my beefs and the beef of many of you out there is they clearly have a talent for making fountain pens. They're doing a good job, but what they haven't yet shown their prowess in is in originality of design. A lot of their pens are inspired by or just downright reverse engineered copies of already existing pens. Now, that said, this is a unique design and a unique pen. It's not the only pen with the type of tube instead of a cap in existence. There are some others, such as this Lotus Fountain Pen from India, but the overall design is Mahjan's own unique take, and I like that and appreciate it. So let's start at the very top of this acrylic pen. You have just that big knob of solid acrylic, which I don't know why, but I like that. Just like in their eyedropper pen here, I just like when you can see a big hunk of acrylic. I like the way it bends light. It's, I don't know, it's just kind of cool. So that's at the top. You come down to that clip, which is the real reason I have the eyedropper pen out from Mahjan, because it is, yes, that same kind of exclamation point clip. And then you come all the way down. Now you might think, and I will say, when you go to open this pen, you're going to think that these threads, just if you're not looking closely and you're not thinking about what pen you're holding, you're going to think that's where you open this pen up. But I say nay, nay, that is inside this tube of a cap. Instead, you come all the way down to the middle piece and you unscrew that pen there. And then you have what looks like, it reminds everybody, of a test tube pen, and so you have this, again, I hesitate to call it a cap, uh, more of a, a pen tube here that's built in, and so you have this. It does not post because it's really not a cap, and so you will set that aside, and here is the pen. And what a good looking pen it is. I like the acrylic. It's done well. You don't see seams or anything like that. And and I think in a pen like this, Demonstrator really was the way to go because it is such an unusual design. And I think having that long tube cap and a solid, uh, maybe it makes some sense, but I think the Demonstrator take on this is just a, a neater way to go. You can choose between silver and this kind of a gold colored trim. And I understand that the nib actually is a gold plated nib. And I'm enjoying this pen more than I thought I would. First, I was concerned this might be heavy enough that it was back weighted. And I mean, technically it is. The balance point of the pen is probably about where my finger is here. And uh, so there is some back weightedness, but the pen is not so long that it's really that big of an issue. For me, it rests so closely to my hand that I don't really notice the back weighting. I've written with the pen some just as a dip pen because as you notice, I have not dirtied the inside of this pen yet with ink. Um, and, and it writes well. Actually, I was very pleased with that. You'll see that here in the writing test. But the balance was also better than I would have expected. That weight is just enough that it kind of rests in my hand right there and is very comfortable writing pen. So ergonomics are good. The grip section has a nice taper to it. And uh, I think it feels good. And in fact, Looking more closely here, because there are no threads here, I found it exceptionally comfortable. It's a rounded trim ring, which makes that transition much nicer than a sharp step down. 
and it makes it a more comfortable pen. I notice that that's there, but it is a very comfortable pen to write with. And so no issues there ergonomically for me anyway. Maybe if you have smaller hands and the pen rests or a different grip where the pen rests maybe about here, you're going to notice that back weightedness more. So keep that in mind, you know, depending on your own grip and size of your hands, that's going to affect you more or less. But if you've got hands where it rests kind of about there, perfect. No issue whatsoever. Did not bother me in the least. Now, just in case you're not familiar with a vac pen, you pull that piston up. It creates, as you do all this, a vacuum. And then when you come down back to this opening, you can see the opening widens there. When you do that, it creates the vacuum behind the piston, and that draws in the ink to the pen. I'll demonstrate that when we fill the pen here in just a second. But first, let's get a look at that nib. It is a number five gold-plated steel nib. And of course, it does say, maybe this is new old stock they're still running through, or maybe they're still stamping them this way. I don't know. But it is a Moon Man super quality nib. Of course, Moon Man is now Mahjan, but you still sometimes see it on boxes and nibs. I think there must just be a warehouse somewhere. And then, of course, they're Standard plastic number five feed with a little bit of ink from my writing earlier. So that's the overall design. Now let's do a size comparison. And for our size comparison today, we have the Twisby Swipe, which is about the same size as the Lamy Safari, if you're not familiar with it. Then we have the Mahjan V1 Vacfield pen today. The Pen BBS 480, inspired by the Schaefer Balance pen of the last century. And then the Mahjong C4 eyedropper pen. And as you can see, compared to that Twisby Swipe, again, similar size to the Safari, that's, that's not bad at all. It is a large diameter pen, however. Here are the pens uncapped with that Mahjong coming in just slightly shorter than the rest of the pens, which might be surprising, but, you know, a pretty average-sized fountain pen when uncapped. All right, let's put some ink in this pen. Again, you will... Pull this back, put the pen down into the ink, and then see if I can get this where you can see it. And then when you push down, we'll create that vacuum and look at that. Fill right up. Now you won't usually get a complete top up fill from a vac pen, and this is a pretty good filling, I think. Uh, about two thirds of that tube is filled up, if not just a little bit more. And that is really a pretty good amount of ink. And while I have the pin here, let's notice that there is a safety valve there. So if you untighten the knob and make sure that that valve is up and out of where it would be seated when it's completely closed, then that will allow the ink to flow down into the feed. So having that valve slightly opened, we're now going to do a writing test. The V1, isn't it? Again, this is a fine nib. And it's a nice writing fine. Now, one weakness of Mahjong at the moment is that there's not a lot of nib variety. So, you know, you get extra fine fine and a food aid nib and uh, no, no mediums in their number fives that I'm aware of, no broads at all. Uh, that would... That would be something that people would really like to see from Mahjong. Wetness is all right for a fine. And just in case you didn't recognize the bottle, though I feel like many of you probably did, ink today, Pelican Royal Blue. Great everyday workhorse ink, well behaved in almost every pen that exists. Just a, a, a great ink and one that you can often find for really reasonable prices. I'll put a link in the description below as always. I mentioned that I think the uh, grip on this and just the overall feel of the pen is quite nice. And it is. I really 
I'm going to attribute a lot of it to that curved trim ring. I, I don't know. just has a nice feel to it. Not bothersome like some step downs. See if you can figure out what's in common with all of these things. If you said they're all part of the name of a diamine ink, you'd be right. If you said they're all bottles right here, just to the right in that diamine ink holder, well, you'd be right about that too. If you said they're all inks that James likes, then you'd be right yet again. Let's do our fast writing scribble. See how this ink keeps up. Good. Excellent. Not only that, but I didn't even lift this time to mess up the sample. Look at that. So it keeps up quite nicely. As you saw, it's wet enough, but not overly wet, but that, that kept up just fine. No issue whatsoever. All right, I feel like doing a few pros and cons today. So let's, let's do first pro, and I think that this pen is quite unique. And I like that about it. But let me tell you something, you don't buy a pen just because uh, the company finally gets around to making some unique pens. It's unique in itself, whether it was Mahjong or somebody else's, it's a unique design. And I think it's kind of fun. I, you know, I know that the cap is not the most practical in the world. So, you know, uh, let's just put that the, uh, the tube cap is uh, either a plus or a minus, depending on your taste. That's going to be a preference thing, but for some people, this is going to be the deal breaker. But I like it. I like the uniqueness of it. I think that it actually, uh, it functions almost like uh, a protective tube and a display for this thing. You can actually set this pin up on its end, and it will stand there uh, on a stable platform. And it, it just makes, you could put this on a shelf, uh, you know, in your office or whatever, and it, it's kind of a cool display next to a bottle of ink. I think that just, it looks cool. And uh, I like it. And, uh, you know, I know that that clip, since I'm on this side of the ledger, uh, that clip is controversial. Okay, I get that. Again, I'm going to put a plus or a minus. Some like it, some don't. It's a con. Uh, it's probably not a pro for very many people, but uh, it's not a con either for a lot. It's not a con for me, but for some it's definitely going to be. But I do, I, I like that too. At least it's not a copy of somebody else's clip again. Uh, but I, I think it works, and I think it works within this design. I do think it would be best if it had the same finish, and that's where I would put a minus on the clip here, is I do think that, that it would be best if all these things were the same finish, especially being a demonstrator, but uh, not a deal breaker for me. It's all right. I like it anyway. Cons that would fall, I would just put this under that tube cap thing, is that it is one, two, two and a half turns. Maybe just because of the size of it, it feels like it's, I don't know, it feels like it's more. The threads are done nicely. It doesn't bother me, and it's not, this is not a quick writing pen. This, for me, is a pen I'm going to keep, you know, around my desk or in my office and enjoy the look of it a lot, but also write with it. Good amount of ink. I like that. Pro, I'm going to put that ink capacity That ink capacity is definitely quite good. I haven't measured it, but it's quite good. As you can see, I mean, sometimes you get pen samples that don't have much volume difference from that at all and sometimes are smaller. So ink capacity, definite plus. Uh, I think that, you know, the value for money, the uniqueness of this pen and the fact that it's a vacuum filler with a safety stop and, uh, you know, some, some extra cost there in the metal knob and the bits and things like that. I think that it's actually really good value for money. 
And even though it is a boring, fine nib, there's no real uh, line variation. Let me just show you that here. You can give it a little bit of pressure and coke just the slightest bit, but I wouldn't push it far. It's not meant to be. But the nib actually, whoops, I don't know what a nib is. A nib, the nib is actually quite a nice writer. It's just well done. This one is well tuned, it's smooth, writes well, wet enough, and uh, if you like fine nibs, then this is a nice fine nib. Maybe not a standout nib, but uh, it writes as well as a medium pilot nib that I have, and I think that's saying something. So that's good, and from what I have heard, it's possible to put a Pilot 200 nib in this pen if you wanted to. So, you know, there's there's even a little bit of a swappability there, and uh, you might put that under as a subheading under nib for you. And then I'm going to add one more, and that's uh, comfort. Something about that rounded trim ring, the length of the section, it all kind of comes together, and it, this is a comfortable pen to write with. Uh, other negatives, I don't... This is a first impressions review, so something could come up later, and if so, I'll share it with you. I don't really have one. I maybe, I know, because I know some of you are sitting there maybe telling me this, uh, can't post. I know, some people don't give a hoot, but some people care a great deal, and for some, that's a deal breaker, so not being able to post, but that's not the design of this pen. I think that's, you know... Not all pins can be all things to all people, and I, I think that that's just not a big deal to me. Again, I I like the design. I like that it it all, it does. It almost feels like it's more of instead of a cap, it's a built-in display and protective tube. And I don't know. I like it. The little test tube pin. It's won me over. What do you know? I think it's kind of cool. And that is my word. On this pin. Thank you so much for sticking with me this long. Thank you for your likes, your shares, subscribes. They always do help that channel. And tell me what you think about the pin. Is this one you're interested in? Do you think it's uh, whack doodle? Do you think it's awesome? What do you think about this pin? And what do you think about more original offerings from our friends at Majan? Share all that in the comments below and let me know what you think. God bless you. Have a great week.